Hey there again, Chris here from Katana. So today's video is going to be a basic tutorial on how to set up your bill of materials inside of Katana, especially if you have uh, products that have variations as well as materials with their own variations. So in this particular use case, uh, what it will be as an example is essentially a shop that makes shirts. So we will have a couple of sizes of shirts as products uh, that come in different colors. And in order to make those different shirts, with different sizes and different colors, we also need materials such as blank t-shirts and different types of colored dyes. So uh, I'm gonna set all that up here in Katana to kind of demonstrate in general how to create your very first product and your very first material with variants and how to apply those together in a recipe. So that way, whenever you are making manufacturing orders to make these products, basically it will always account the right materials for the right product variants every single time and you don't have to set up multiple recipes for every product variant that you have. So I'll go ahead and get started and uh, hope you enjoy. So the very first thing that you'll do when you're setting up a product in Katana is we'll go ahead and add it here with our quick add button where we will add a new product card. And so the idea of this is to create uh, basically colored shirts. So I will have the name of this product as colored shirts and these are measured by the piece. And I'll have, let's say, a default sales price on this of uh, 20 US dollars, for example. So what I'll need to do is select here, yes, this product has multiple variants. So Katana has what we call basically a variant configurator where you enter the variants and the variant options. And then what it does is it creates all of the product listings as like the variants which fall inside of this product category. Not, not product category, but actual product itself. So let me show you here real quick. Uh, let's say that we have three colors of this particular shirt. We will create the variant option as color, blue, green, and red. And then the next option we will have is shirt size. And this will be small, medium, and large. And once these are added, then you're going to get nine different variations of that particular colored shirt comes in three different sizes, comes in three different colors, comes in nine different variations. So it generates the product variance for you in this case. So now we have a full list of all of those products and their variants. You'll see that what you'll need to do before you add the variations is put in the default sales price in order to have that default sales price apply to every single variation. You can also go inside of here and manually adjust that if you desire, just a little tip there. Um, so the next step here is to essentially set up the materials that are going to make these shirts as well as the process that's applied to making them. Uh, we'll need to go inside the product recipe to add the materials, but we haven't added any materials into Katana yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and go do that and get everything set up. So we'll go to a new material card and in the material card, I am going to be using basically dye in order to color my shirts. So I have to buy this product in from a supplier and I will go ahead and do it like so. So these are dye. I will probably buy dye by the liter in this case. Some people might buy it by the gram, just kind of depends on uh, your industry. So we'll go ahead and select liters as a unit of measure for this product. And the default purchase price for this material is going to let's say be $5 per liter. So this is the purchase price as opposed to the sales price. This is going to be the price that's going to populate your, your, your purchase orders when you buy this from your supplier. Does this material have multiple variations? Yes, it does. So for this variation of material, since we use it to color our shirts, we're going to call a variant option color and we're going to have blue, green, and red. And then, so we basically do the same thing here. We generate three variations of that dye. And like so, we have it. So we need to create one more material type, which is the, the, the other material that's used to make the colored shirts. And that's basically the blank t-shirts themselves. So we'll go inside here and create a new material card. And we will call these uh, blank t-shirt. These are measured by the piece, but these come in three different sizes. So we want to apply different material variations for them. Let's go ahead and add a purchase price first. So let's say we buy each of these in at uh, $2 per unit. 
we will add our variations here for size and we will have small medium and large and this will generate material variations for us so now we have three different particular types of shirts that we could purchase in and use for our color t-shirts that we make so what you'll see here is that you can click on your items list in this section and you'll see the products and you see the nine variations we created and then also in the material section you'll see the three variations of dye we created as well as the three variations of blank t-shirts that we created so if we go back to our products page we can click any variation of these t-shirts this can be confusing for some because what you'll be noticing is is that you have nine shirts here which one do i click on to adjust the recipe for all of them well actually when you click on any of them you'll see that the variations all apply down here below in this table so you can click on any shirt that you desire and you'll get this list so the next step is to go to the product recipe and create the recipe criteria for this product so inside a product recipe we will go ahead and add our material or product and we have blue dye we have green dye we have red dye we also have small blank t-shirt medium blank t-shirt and a large blank t-shirt so it takes a certain quantity for um, for a certain quantity of this dye to make that shirt that color so let's say that every single shirt uses the same exact quantity of dye so let's say in our case we use 0 0.1 uh, zero, so 0 0.1 liters and we'll do this for each and every single one and for each color t-shirt we make it takes one blank t-shirt to make that shirt okay it's just that simple so what exactly are we doing here we're adding materials to the product in the product recipe and why did we add six lines of this information is because for every single variation all nine variations of the product color t-shirt we're going to have one of these six variations of material and what we do is we create this grid where we basically define the, re the recipe uh, quantities from the materials and we also define which variation that this material is applied to to make one variation of that final t-shirt so we're basically mapping them together so for example in order to use the blue dye uh, to create a blue shirt we know that we have to select the blue dye for the blue product and then also for the shirt sizes this blue dye will apply to every single shirt size the same with the green we only select the green products and this will apply to all of the shirt sizes as well and for the red dye we only select the red products and this will apply to all the shirt sizes now for the blank t-shirts it applies all colors apply to each and every shirt so we can have we can have a small t-shirt it could be in all three colors medium shirt all three colors and large shirt all three colors so we just select all for the product on the product size in order to make a small shirt with any color you need to use we need to uh, map that material to the small t-shirt product we need to map medium blank t-shirts to the medium product shirts and we also need to do the same for the large shirts and that is essentially how you map all of your material variants directly to your product variants once you're done with that process everything automatically saves since we have autosave here in Katana and then we need to define product operations for your bill of materials so for simplicity's sake I am going to assign only one type of operation inside of Katana uh, for this product and this product operation is going to be a basically a coloring process so the operation is coloring process maybe the coloring process requires you to use a mixing machine which you can add as a resource generally speaking uh, what is an operation an operation is a process that is used to make the product and they're usually done in order a resource is 
can be a variety of things. A resource could be a workstation, it could be a machine, it could be a person. Uh, it really depends on how your business operates. Um, so generally, some people will prefer to use a workstation as a resource because they have multiple people using that location. Some people used to prefer a person as a resource because maybe that person is the only one who's responsible for that operation no matter what. Uh, so it all depends on kind of your use case. You can define that however you wish. Uh, cost per hour, that could be like your machine running cost per hour. That could be um, uh, somebody's salary cost per hour. That's what you define. How much does it cost to do this process per hour? Basically, that's what it comes down to. So let's say that the to run the mixing machine for one hour cost uh, ten dollars. That could be uh, the labor plus the machine overhead, both combined as a single operation process cost. Anyhow, what it does is you input that uh, rate unit per hour, and then you input also the duration of time. So this is duration of time. One thing that's very important in Katana is we're not using batch sizes, so everything done is is done on a per unit basis. So since we're defining the recipe for a product we have to define how much time does it take to make one product with that one process. And then that becomes the number we use in terms of time. So perhaps maybe to make one shirt, it's five minute process. And then this calculates an actual cost of that operation on your behalf. So once all of this information is calculated, then what happens next is you can go back to your general info and you can get some basic information about your product. You can see that your ingredients cost based on the default purchase prices that are default purchase costs that we put into the materials. Uh, it adds them together, the small sh or the shirt plus the color into this ingredients cost. And then the operations cost is essentially the, uh, the uh, unit rates per hour that you set plus the time. And that's the cost per unit. So then you have your default sales price here. So why is all of this important and how does it affect your recipes when you're actually putting it into practice? Well, the question here that we will answer comes directly from the make screen. So for example, anytime you are on the make screen and you're taking a look at your queue and you add, let's say, a make to stock order, you decide ultimately that you want to make one of these colored shirts, one of these nine colored shirts. You could select green and then you make one quantity of that. It's going to automatically select for you the green dye and it's going to automatically select for you the uh, medium t-shirt since that's a green medium colored t-shirt. Uh, additionally, if you were to select one of the other products uh, by making another make to stock order, let's say uh, a red large shirt, it's gonna do the exact same thing from your ingredients list. Red dye and red, uh, and sorry, blank large t-shirt, which are the two ones you need, that are needed to make this. And you also have the coloring process with the mixing machine listed down here below. So essentially what you're doing is by mapping raw materials and their variants to the product and the product variants, that mapping process helps predetermine and predefine your recipe for all of those product variants that you have in your system. And so that essentially will save you a lot of time. And so every time that you're creating your uh, make to stock or make to order um, work, work orders in your, in your production schedule, and then you'll be able to fully define everything that you need to and uh, and have that accounted for from raw material stock. You'll see here that the material availability is not available. You check your stock for those particular items. You'll see that all of the materials that we have added earlier, right here, there's, no, there's nothing in stock currently. So you can purchase in those items. And you'll also see that they have been reserved based on existing and open manufacturing orders, which we just created. So, that in a nutshell is how to set up a product with variants, bill of materials, uh, using material and their variants to create a recipe and op operations. I hope that is helpful for you starting your Katana account and uh, getting your product set up. Uh, if you have questions, just uh, contact us, support at katanamrp.com, and uh, we'll be happy to reach out and help out. Cheers.